Ken, you currently have a duplex that is being managed by us here at Holton Wise. You've got some ideas on how to increase your ROI. You wanted to toss around some ideas with me. Ken, this is your video. Let's dive in. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, holding wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. All right, Ken, my man, 5595 Pearl Road. This is a property that you're not thinking about buying. You actually already bought this from me. I sold this to you back in October of 2016. Uh, you paid $94,000 for this duplex. I'm just gonna pull up the listing uh, for you here, the photos here, uh, when you purchased it. You know, here's a front page photo. We had some inherited tenants that were in the property when you bought it, okay? Here's a kitchen, all right, we got some ugly ass wood paneling. Here's the third floor bedroom, okay? Glass block in the basement, you know, nice big dry basement. So this is what the unit looked like when you bought it from me back in 2016. And admittedly, the ride, it hasn't been like atrocious or anything, but uh, you ran into some typical bumps in the road that you'll see when you're investing in real estate. Um, and you wanted to talk through some of those. You wanted to get my take on what we can do to make things better. Uh, so I just want to go through your email to me real quick, and uh, then I'll start touching on some stuff here. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I think I'm going to convert that into your deal analysis service. You were originally thinking about doing a coaching session, uh, but you actually thought it'd be cooler if I just totally analyzed this and made you a video, uh, which is cool, man. That was a really good idea. We've actually never done a video analysis uh, for anybody of a property they currently own. So this is the very first one. I never even thought to offer this product. I figured we would just do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with folks uh, when they wanted to talk about their existing portfolio. But I, I like this video idea better because you have a tangible product now. You know, unlike a conversation, me and you, we have it one time and then you know it's gone. It's in the wind. Uh, this you could refer back several times, um, and I was able to put a little prep work into it. So good job out of you, Ken, for coming up with this idea. This is cool. Um, Okay, so you want a coherent plan for 5595 Pearl, which now has a vacancy in the bottom. We still have a tenant up top. As you know, when I bought the property, it all went to shit after a month. The tenants left. We had to be, one had to be evicted. The other one just moved out. As such, you didn't really get to do a full-on rehab. Your opinion, you think the property has been underperforming since. You want to increase that value. So right now, per your email. So I'm looking to see what's the best plan of action. Do a full rehab of the downstairs while waiting for the upstairs tenant to leave. Leave the downstairs vacant until the upstairs lease expires. Then do a rehab on both or just keep things the way they are. How can I monetize the garage? Can I turn the basement into a third garden unit? Or should I just sell the thing and buy another property? And then uh, we exchanged a few more emails. Um, and then uh, later you gave me an even more comprehensive bullet point list. Uh, the first one, do a full rehab on the bottom, make it look nice, get rid of the hor horrible dark wood paneling, refinish the floors, go with neutral gray paint, new kitchens and baths, et cetera, et cetera, or just keep it as is. Um, and then a second question you had about that. Should you rehab that bottom unit if you need to rehab it uh, or while that upstairs is occupied or should you wait till they're both vacant? So let's, let's dive into that, dude. Um, so first thing, right? You purchased this property, um, <clears throat> you know, this is back in 2016, so three years ago. Uh, as I recall, this property was part of a package, uh, three duplexes um, that I sold. Um, you bought this one and, you know, a couple other guys, they bought the others. 
Uh, it was a private landlord. He was a local dude. I think he owned these for like 20 years, right? So this one came with inherited tenants. So those are totally unproven. So my first bit of advice to you, right, is this is your only property here in Cleveland with Holton Wise. I, I'm guessing you only have one in the Cleveland market. I don't know if you have other properties in other markets. Um, and I also don't know if you have other properties in the Cleveland market through other companies. I don't believe you do. Um, and if you do, that's totally fine. Uh, but I'm just going to go on the assumption this is your only property here in the Cleveland market. Um, and I'm assuming it's probably one of your only properties in your portfolio. Uh, so, you know, you're just getting started on your real estate journey. You're just buying these properties. I don't want you to do something that I see a lot of investors do. And that's they get uh, an initial bump in the road from like inherited tenants and they immediately think it must be the property and they want to totally change course. Like you have one property with two units over a very short ownership period. You know, those tenants, totally unproven. Nobody has any idea what we're getting when we inherit tenants. So don't like throw out the plan when you run into an issue, right? Because you are going to evict people in this game. It's going to happen. You know, maybe you run a property for 10 years, then you evict a person, then you evict another person, then you go another 10 years. Maybe you, same property, you run it for three years, eviction, four years, eviction, right? Like it's, it's going to, every property is going to be a little different. We got to mitigate our risk as best as we can, right? To lower the frequency of those types of things. But when they do occur, we can't just panic. Don't go into panic mode especially when they're inherited tenants, right? So when you're thinking about your investment, what you should do with your investment. Selling some of your smaller real estate holdings is a great way to raise the funds necessary to maximize the growth of your real estate portfolio. A 1031 exchange can benefit you greatly by allowing you to defer your capital gains tax so you can use those funds towards the purchase of more real estate instead you are going to need a qualified intermediary in your corner. Dave Foster is a degreed accountant with a track record of successfully serving as a qualified intermediary for thousands of clients. Dave and his team would love the opportunity to see if a 1031 exchange is right for you. To set up a free consultation with Dave and his team, call 850-889-1031 or visit the 1031investor.com. I don't want you to put too much credence into your initial bumps in the road. Just put that behind you because that's unproven. Let's look at what we have in front of us. The property itself, you're in a B-class area, right? It's in the you know, city of Parma. That's a solid area. Um, so you're not going to be evicting people all the time. So that one eviction and that one tenant who moved out, you know, that's not like going to be the norm. It's not like we we bought a property here in the ghetto, right? This is a pretty solid property, you know, solid tenant base. When we do our screening, Holton Wise, we put new tenants in there for you. You know, we get a pretty good, uh, you know, tenant base. We get a, a lot of folks to choose from. There's demand in this area. So it's not high risk. So as far as the previous eviction, I'm not worried about that. Uh, you're worried about like, what should I do now, right? So since those turnovers we did kind of like we basically because you know you were i think you were tight on cash you didn't want to go crazy with the renovations so we kind of did like a little bit of minimal stuff here so you know we went through some of the bedrooms we did go with the agreeable gray paint the white trim which is what people really want so this stuff looks a little bit nicer but what we have uh we still had some uh outdated you know we up upgraded your bathroom we made your bathroom look great but we still had some uh, outdated kitchen, right? We didn't like really deck out the kitchen. So this kitchen is still a little bit outdated here. This isn't looking like too fly, uh, but we were still able to go ahead and rent that unit. We were able to get you 750 a month and you have a tenant in there currently right now paying 750 a month. At the moment, I do not want to see you move that tenant out. I don't want you to see you worry about that unit at all leave that tenant be. Yes, with a little bit of renovation, we could increase that rent, but not very, very much, okay? This is a duplex unit. The most we could ever probably get out of this unit, and that would be stretching it, right, would be if we can get 850 a month, and that's because the upstairs is so big, 
We're getting 750 right now. Some of it looks pretty nice. Some of it's a little dated. This is the down. We'll get to that soon. Your total cap, right? The most you'll ever get out of this unit is going to be 850 a month. And that is only $100 more than what we're currently getting. So it makes no sense for you right now to worry about your monthly cash flow. Like you're looking at your cash flow like, oh, I'm only getting 750 a month. I want 850, I want that extra 100. Well, it doesn't make any sense for you to stop bringing in that 750 right now, remove them, and then we have to do a turnover. And to get it up to that 850, we probably are gonna have to repaint everything again. And then we're gonna need to modernize that kitchen. So you're probably gonna look, you know, I would say maybe to do everything and go upstairs and repaint all that, make that all look agreeable, gray and nice in that third floor, you're probably looking at maybe like an eight to $10,000 turnover to totally deck it out. Now, is that a bad idea when we get a natural turnover? No, I think that's probably what you wanna do. You can spend that eight to 10 grand decking out the upstairs unit, but wait for the natural turnover. You already got a down, a down unit right now that's totally vacant. And you're like, oh, what do I do with that unit? You know, what do I do in relation to the upstairs? Should I kick them out? Should I wait? Don't worry about this upstairs right now. All I want you to do with this upstairs is just leave them put. Let them continue to pay $750 a month to us right now. When they do turn over at that point, yes. You know, my advice to you, don't do the minimum again. You know, because kitchens and baths, like we already painted everything, but you're going to have to paint it again. We already made the bath look nice, but you know, you're going to have to repaint that again. But the kitchen, it's still, it's still not that great. So kitchens and baths, you know, that's what really sells the stuff. So I think at that point, at the natural turnover, yes, I do want to see you get that beautiful kitchen. You know, we'll do like a quartz countertop. We'll do an undermount sink. You know, we'll go like all white cabinets or maybe some gray cabinets. Make it look really, really high end and we'll maximize your earning potential at 850. And then what the cool thing is gonna be, right? The cool thing there is yes, you're getting the extra 100, right? But you're, you did it smart because you had to spend money turning the unit over anyway. So just do it all at once. And then when you increase to that, you know, that extra 100 bucks a month, that's not even the biggest thing. The biggest thing is at that point, you have one of the nicer units on the market. So your turnovers of that unit going forward will be much less frequent. And the turnovers are actually the return killer. The actual income you're bringing in every month isn't as important as how long these people stay, right? If you can get someone in there at 850 a month, you know, that's cool. You're making an extra $1,200 a year for them staying for 12 months, but that's not the kicker, dude. The kicker is they're probably gonna stay two, three, four times longer. So that's two, three, four times less frequent turnovers. You know, and if you just do like the minimal turnovers, you know, like two, three grand here and there, but you do like two, three, four, five, six of them, you know, over the same course of time where you only had to do one because you did it right one time, that's where you save your real money. And yeah, again, you're going to get a little bit more money in rent. We can max it out at about 850, but it's the reduced turnover. So that's what I want you to do for that upstairs unit. Let them ride, and then when it does become vacant, spend the eight to 10K, let's deck out that kitchen, get you 850, and give you the best shot at getting a long-term tenant. Now, the other unit is vacant, okay? That's the downstairs unit. And the downstairs, it looks a lot like it did when I sold it back in 2016, sold it to you in 2016. Let me find the photos for that. This this paneling, man, this this is ugly. Nobody likes this, right? You know, it's it's uh, we were still able to rent this for you. Uh, we rented it out for 750. You know, again, good location, but this is not really what people want to see. They don't want to see this wood paneling. Um, so what you want to do right now is you want to modernize this unit. You want to go through. We want to go with the agreeable gray. We want to make everything look modern. And more, most importantly, we want to make sure we give the tenants a really, really nice kitchen. So the plan of attack that I just laid out for that upstairs unit, I want you to do that to this downstairs unit. And I want you to do it now, though. The fact that there's a tenant upstairs, we don't need to worry about that. Our crews are going to be able to go in and they're going to be able to renovate this unit without bothering that tenant upstairs. Remember, don't do anything crazy like remove the tenant upstairs or keep everything empty and wait. 
continue collecting cash from that upstairs tenant, deck out this unit, spend the eight to $10,000 decking this out. As for what you're gonna rent this unit for, in the past we've rented it for 750. We could probably get you up to 800 a month, okay, at this unit, and that's it, right? The other unit too, it's got that huge third floor. We only got you up to 850. If you're wondering why there's not a bigger jump in rent, it's you have to look at the overall market, what else is out there. You know, the upstairs, that's huge, but right after that, you're not dealing with duplexes anymore. You're going right into single family homes in the city of Parma. People are renting single family homes for a hundred bucks more than that, right? You know, 900, thousand bucks, you're getting a full single family home. You don't live above or below somebody else. You don't have a neighbor, right? So 850, it's super, super nice and it's huge, but you try to go any more than that, people are just gonna rent a home. Same thing with this unit. You're capped at only 800 because there's only two bedrooms, dude. Like, yeah, it's nice, it's beautiful, but it's still a duplex, right? They still have neighbors. Uh, and if they're gonna be willing to spend more than that, you know, they're just gonna move on to a single family home. So you gotta look at your neighborhood uh, and your comparables and whatnot, you know, what else is gonna be on the market. But I still want you to spend the money because it's not necessarily that rent. It's not the change from 750 to 800, which is gonna make you the money, Ken. It's the fact that you're gonna have a much higher quality tenant who's gonna wanna stay there longer. Like, nobody looks at this and goes, yeah, dude, I love this. This is awesome. Nobody is like proud of this, right? There's going to be people who are like, yeah, this is fine. I like the location. I want to send my kids to Parma schools. I cannot afford to move into a house. So 750 will work with me. But they're just like, really, they're just settling. If you think about it, dude, they're, they're settling, bro. And they're going to make that move as soon as something better comes along. If we give them something beautiful, you know, again, based on the fact that people with more money are just going to get a house, we're not going to go crazy high in rent, but the person who can spend 800 and that's like the top of their budget, they're going to move in and they're going to stay longer and you're going to make the money up for the rehab by not doing a bunch of smaller two and $3,000 rehabs over the years, right? So that's what I want you to do with the other one. Don't worry about that upstairs tenant. We'll just knock this one out now, bring in that cash, and if and when that upstairs turns over, that's when you'll spend the eight to 10 grand for that unit. If you would like Holton Wise to sell a property you already own in a video just like this one, send an email to sales at holtonwise.com. Now, moving on, that's what you do with the units. You had some other out of the box ideas on how you could possibly increase cash flow to this investment. You wanted my take on them. Can we turn some or most of the basement into another unit, a garden unit? There's plumbing in place, at least there's a toilet as well as the washer and dryer units. Can we add electric or gas range and have a kitchen? Lots of wasted space down there. Uh, no, no we can't. Uh, I mean, fit, yeah, it's possible, right? But it's not a good investment, right? This is Parma. You know, you could get duplex units for like 50, 60K a unit here in Parma. For us to go in and retrofit a unit in the basement of this property, you're probably spending at least $40,000. After we've gone in and spent that $40,000, what you've got is a tenant who's willing to live in a basement. You know, just like the tenants for the other two units, you know, once you get past that 850 range, they're just gonna move to a house, right? Well, what kind of rent do you really think you're gonna get in a basement apartment, right? It's underground. So, you know, you're in like the like four or $500 range. It ain't worth $40,000 to get a four or $500 tenant. You try to charge like 700 bucks, they're just gonna move to an above ground unit. So um, it would make no sense. You would just be wasting your money because you got to remember to actually make one of these basements, it's not as simple as you just buy some cabinets, you throw them down there, dude. It's not how it works. Uh, this is Cleveland. Number one, we have a pretty high water table around here. This is an old home. You know, the basements are not necessarily the most dry things in the world. You're going to get some moisture down there. So you'd have to probably spend a ton of money going in and completely waterproofing this to be able to build drywall, you know, inside of that stone wall. You're looking at roughly a hundred bucks a square foot. Uh, all four walls and you got to tear out the driveway so you're spending a bunch of money there 
you need to actually cut out the windows and make a second form of egress. Every single apartment needs two forms of egress. Um, the ceiling height, probably not even tall enough. Uh, these old basements, you know, they're just, they weren't, they weren't built for living spaces. Plus you probably have to retrofit where your furnaces and hot water tanks are going to be down there just for like a whole slew of reasons. That would be a terrible idea, terrible waste of money. Again, you'd be on it for at least like 40, 50 K to, to rent what? Some crummy ass basement apartment that nobody's going to want because they could just go somewhere else and get an above ground apartment. So that save your money. If anything, take that money and buy a, another duplex or single family house. Um, you know, save that. Don't, that's not a good idea. We don't want to do that. Uh, next question here. How can we monetize the garage? It's just being used as extra storage, not generating any income. Can we convert to storage units for the tenants and charge extra? No, you can't do that either. Um, the price points we are getting right now, you know, that's it. That's the ceiling for the quality of product you've provided them. There's no room in the marketplace uh, to charge them any more money. And if we do the two renovations I want you to do, you know, the new price points are going to be eight and eight fifty. Uh, you're, you're just not going to be market competitive if on top of the unit you try to make them pay for their garage. So you, you cannot do that. Um, one other thing you had mentioned, <clears throat> which is a pretty good point, that third floor is accessible by the downstairs tenant based on where it is in uh, relation to the common hallway. So yeah, when we're doing that upstairs renovation, when the tenant moves out, don't, don't mess with it right now. They, they, like the door is lockable, but like the downstairs tenant could like walk all the way up there. What we could do, what my team can do, we can install another doorway somewhere in the stairs where it makes sense like both tenants they walk in the back and like they, they go up that little first flight of stairs and they get to that little landing uh, right there we can put another lockable exterior door and that way you never have to worry about like the downstairs tenant ever going up close uh, to where that third floor uh, bedroom is so that's how we would solve that problem uh, so you, we just go ahead and pencil that into the eight to ten thousand dollar renovation that might add like another 800 to a thousand bucks to knock that out last thing i'm looking last concern you have on this property and how to possibly increase your income is right now you're saying you're spending about 200 bucks a month on average for your water and sewer anything we can do to lessen that well uh if you're following my content typically i tell everyone they need to budget roughly 75 bucks a unit uh, for water and sewer. So that puts you at $150 uh, every single month for a duplex, okay? Now, water and sewer is like the hardest thing in the world to estimate, right? That's an estimate. Some people are going to use less. Some people are going to use more. You know, we cannot control the length of showers that these people are going to take. Uh, I don't think you're too far off. You're only 50 bucks off. And you got to remember, your upstairs unit is bigger, right? It's got that whole third floor. So you may or may not have, you know, tenants that have more children uh, attracted to your space. And we cannot discriminate against anybody based on the amount of children they have. That just goes against, you know, fair housing. So that's not something we can do. Um, so honestly, I really wouldn't concern yourself with uh, a small variance of 50 bucks a month. You know, as you own this thing, these tenants are going to move out, new tenants are going to move in, and you're going to see that thing swing. Um, so, you know, that's just part of the beast, man. That's part of the game. That's part of property management. You know, the rents, you know, the water sewer usage, rather, that's going to go up, that's going to go down, that's going to vary by tenants. You have to look at the bigger picture here, right? Like worrying about 50 bucks a month, man. You know, like to me, based on everything you sent me in here, it, it looks like you're... You're, you're looking at your investment strategy in, in too much of a micro fashion, bro. I mean, you're, you're worried about pennies here, right? To my knowledge, you're a pilot, right? It's a pretty prestigious job, right? That's a great profession. I don't know if you have like the idea that maybe you could buy a few rentals and then you get to quit your job as a pilot. Uh, a, I don't know why you'd want to do that, right? It's a good job. It's a good career. And B, you know, rental real estate like this, this is a get rich slow thing, right? So it's not about trying to extract every single penny out of that property. It's about adding one small source of income into your life 
right? And then slowly adding more. One becomes two, two become four, four become eight. You gotta keep stacking these rentals. Like you have to buy so many rentals to, to live off of them, especially if you're replacing a salary uh, like that that a pilot would make here in America. So I, I think you should just like reevaluate your thinking. Don't worry about trying to extract every like little penny, like $50 on a water sewer bill, dude. That's completely irrelevant, especially when the third, the, the, the second unit has got a third floor and it's going to attract, you know, it's going to attract bigger families. And you're in a city like Parma. A lot of people move out of Cleveland. They move into Parma to get into the school district. So you're probably going to get a lot of folks with kids, right? So, you know, more kids, more people equals higher water bills. It, it's just part of the business that you're in, man. So you're just going to kind of have to accept that it might not hit 150 every month. Sometimes it might be higher. Sometimes, you know, maybe we'll get a tenant, maybe like a single dude moves in one day and he barely ever showers. But, uh, you know, anticipate around 150 um, when you're paying, you know, a small amount like that. There's, re there's really nothing you can do, man. I would just really focus, right, on moving forward, setting yourself up for the property to be running on the most automated way possible with the least amount of risk. And that's going to be, you know, doing those renovations to get yourself the best quality people and then just step away from the investment, man. Leave the investment be. Don't try to get all crazy, thinking about crazy weird ideas like putting basement apartments in there or trying to lower water sewer bills by 50 bucks or trying to make the tenants pay for their own garage that they're already paying for, man. Uh, you know, sometimes in like other self-help seminars or people's books or programs or some other bullshit like that, people try to give you all these theoretical ideas that sound good um, but when you actually apply them to real life, to real life tenants, you'll see that the market will just push back against you and you're just wasting so much time and energy and effort thinking about little bullshit like that, where that time and energy and effort could be spent so much better in other ways. One other way, of course, is working your current career, which is a high paying career. So, you know, I wouldn't want you to focus on how many rentals can I get and how soon can I quit my job? Instead, I would focus on how can I bring in a ton of revenue from my high paying job to buy more rentals, to take my additional sets of income from one property to two, to four, to eight. If you're you know, in the weeds here worrying about little stuff like that, you're never gonna be able to build that big passive portfolio, which is ultimately everyone's goal. And uh, quickly, I just wanted to touch on it. Uh, I don't really think you should sell, um, but one of your questions was, should I just sell this and buy another property? You bought this from me in 2016 for 94,900, I think it was, somewhere around there, like 95K. Uh, if we went ahead and did those two really nice renovations and it was operating at 850, 800, I'd be able to sell this asset for you for like 115, 120. Uh, that's what you'd get for it. Um, but you know, of course you're gonna have to pay a 7% fee and uh, then you have your closing costs as well. Um, and then your plan of attack to buy another property. But I, I guess the question would be, what other property would you buy? Like, what would be the point of spending that renovation money, spending the money uh, on having me market and sell it for you, um, spending the money on the title cost, the transfer cost, to then take the same amount of money you had and buy a very similar property, right? Like you got yourself a pretty nice property. You bought it at a pretty nice price, right? It's priced less than what you can get it for on, you know, on today's market, right? The prices in Cleveland are higher in 2019 than they were in 2016. And then when you did buy another property, okay, you're just gonna pay more closing costs. You're three years older in your, or three years newer in your loan rather. So you're paying more interest, less principal. So I think, you know, just looking at your business, if you were to sell this to try to replace it with something else, I think you're just kind of running around chasing your tail and you're gonna end up in uh, a similar or worse position. Now, what I think would be smarter, doing those renovations, keeping this asset, saving up enough money for another 25% down payment and purchasing a second one and just focusing on moving forward. Well, Ken, that, that's my opinion on what you should do with this property, man. Uh, you know, just get out of the weeds, right? Let's, you know, let things ride with that up unit for now. Let's take the time of that down unit being vacant. Let's do the rental. Let's do it right. Spend that eight to 10. Let the upstairs ride. Soon as they become vacant, you'll worry about spending the eight to 10 there. And then other than that, man, just, just step back from the investment. Don't worry about basement apartments. 
Don't worry about renting people to garages, right? Just, just step back from the investment. We're gonna make those two smart moves when the time is right, one now, one when we get our next turnover. And then from there, I want you to just focus on your career, focus on making more revenue to be used as down payments for other assets, other investments. That's everything I've got for you, Ken. If you have any further questions, just go ahead and drop them in the comments below or shoot me an email. For anybody else who's watching this, if you'd like me to analyze your deal, typically I analyze deals you're thinking about buying, but again, Ken came up with this idea. If you want me to analyze a property you already own, you can tell me what's going on with your property. You know, this one, Holton Wise is already managing it, so I had a good idea what's going on. Tell me your thoughts, your plans on maybe other ways you think that you can make the investment better. Sometimes they might be good ideas. Other times they might be ideas where I need to shift your focus and I can get you focused on the bigger picture like we've done here today with my man, Ken. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys here today. If this is the first time you've ever seen one of my videos, make sure you smash that subscribe button. If you go to the show notes below, you can subscribe to my daily email list. You're going to get educational, informative videos just like this, along with the most investment properties for sale all around the U.S. sent to you every day at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In the show notes below, click to subscribe to that. As always, I'm James Wise with Holt Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, holding wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states, allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies, but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, Holton Wise, as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area, can market your property in a video just like this one to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.